So this is actually, I think this is a magnum size rage tail actually. So it's a pretty, pretty big trailer. So you gotta cut it off a little bit to fit this jig a little better. But what that does is it gives it a pretty big bulky profile, but you see how wide that is? You know, you got the double, double the flat tail and the flatness of that bait really helps because when you're swimming that jig along and it's just floating, that the flatness of that really catches the water and you can really just hover it up there and really slow it down. Keep it moving, but you can slow down big time and worm it through that cover, worm it through that lay down. There we go. Nice. Awesome. Good deal. Nice one. Nice bucket. Sweet. Let's swim in a jig. Targeting isolated wood. Boy, that's a fatty right there. <laughs> Good deal. Nice. Yeah, just casting around. Good deal. So yeah, it's a pretty simple program really. You can see there's tons of wood. This one that I just caught it off of is actually a submerged tree. You're just beating the bank really with this swim jig. Little 3 8 ounce flat trailer on there, really just hovering it. They're just really not, not all that aggressive. And so, you know, we've been throwing spinner baits and a lot of other things, but it just seems like that, that jig just floating up there is, is really been what's been getting bit. Target casting this stuff. I mean, you got bull rushes and grass mixed in with the occasional lay down. I shouldn't even say the occasional. The, there's quite a few lay downs and we're really focusing more on the lay downs that are adjacent to the deep water. So that's where our fish are coming from. You know, they're, they're just kind of sliding up and they want that deep water access. Can just hover it in those branches and today what we found i mean we've we've hit a lot of this cover we've fished some shallow bays we've fished huge expansive grass flats and that's really what we thought we were going to be able to come out here and do is fish these grass flats but for whatever reason those fish just aren't in there and we're just not getting bit so we've adjusted and now we're you know it's it's intermittent with grass and and cover but it seems like these laydowns are really where those fish are holding. So really just being able to worm this swim jig through that cover and just floating it up there. Cause it's pretty subtle. I mean, it's not, obviously spinner baits and everything are great. Spinner baits and, and swim baits, Texas rig swim baits and everything are awesome for worming through that cover and everything. And, and I'm sure a swim bait would probably get bit as well, but I just like that big bulky profile of a jig. And it's just, it's a lot more subtle that, you know, you don't have big blades flashing and that sort of deal. So as you can see, high skies, it's been super cold, north wind, and today's finally the day we got some sun, calm, slick. So these fish are just in a little bit of a funk. And when you swim a jig, it's just, it, it's just something a little bit more subtle, like I said and you can just float it and keep it and hang it in front of their face a little bit longer. I know you can do the same with a spinnerbait, but today it's just proven that, that they're liking the swim jig just a little bit more. You know, and, and obviously this is still a jig, so when you're, when you're out working all this cover, breaking down the cover really, you can, you know, you can stop and kill it and still work it like a jig if you need to, pitch it up into, you know, 10 inches of water and work it real slow, kind of drag it, pick it up, and swim it out of there. Something you can't necessarily do as well with a spinnerbait. And the beauty of fishing a jig instead of like a spinnerbait is I can fish it. Not that you can't fish a, a spinnerbait up shallow as well, but you gotta keep it moving. I can throw this thing up in real shallow water, sink it to the bottom, or I can swim it off the end of a laydown and sink it all, to the, all the way to the bottom. When I'm swimming this jig too, it's a combination of both. I use my reel and my rod. I'm using a relatively long rod. Uh, this is a 7.5 moderate action, medium heavy moderate action. 
I'm kind of I'm I'm high sticking it for sure because I'm just trying to float it. But I'm also my when I I'm using my reel to kind of pulse that jig along with a little bit of a rod shake, and you can just see how that jig just floats up there with that big wide trailer and you can just hang it in front of their face and I can just swim it alongside those laydowns. When you're attacking these laydowns too it's important to hit them from all different angles. You really you know your two most important casts are going to be the one down the length of it each side. So as you're approaching the laydown you can you know hit the, hit the, the part closest to shore and that sort of deal where you're getting up real tight depending on the angle you're at you're usually not swimming it along the whole tree so the two more most important casts in my opinion is when you're perpendicular to that tree and you can make a cast down the left side and then come back and make a cast on the right side but at the same time you want to make sure you can you know as you're going away kind of hit hit some of that middle part as well just making multiple casts at it from different angles because at times the right angle can be the key in getting getting bit. And as I'm watching, I can kind of warm it up, up over the top. Oh, here comes a bass. I just watched him. Got him! Oh, I watched him swim off the log. That was so cool. That was cool. So I, a pretty, <laughs> just a chunk. So I was just swimming it over the top of those limbs. As I was saying, you can just kind of worm it through that. Boy, that is a fat, fat bass. He swam right off the top of the log. Not the longest dude in the world, but dude's got a belly. So like I was saying, you can just worm it over the top of those limbs, and that's exactly what I was doing. With that big profile on there, that big trailer, I can just hover that thing. So it's just it just floating right in front of that fish and he just slurped it up. You can see, if you look on the bank up behind me, you can see it's super steep. So you can assume that it's just gonna continue into the lake. So obviously we got super shallow up close to the bank at the base of this lay down. And then, so we're just sitting 10 yards off the front of this tree and we're in 17 feet of water. So these are really the ones to key in on with that super deep water access. What I like to do to ensure that deep water access on these trees, higher, higher percentage trees, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take a look at my map. This whole bank, these contours are super tight together. And so, so you know that deep water, you got this deep basin here and this whole bank here. I know most of those trees are gonna be hanging off and have some deep water access. Whereas it, you can see here, there's a little bit more of a flat, which that can be good too, as the water warms or what have you, those flats, you know, if you can find a deep water access, like right on this point, there will probably be some bass right there since you have that steep break right along where they could potentially be spawning up on that flat, but. I'm fishing a pretty light jig, but I'm not, and I'm fishing that big trailer to float that jig, but I'm not fishing super shallow water. It's really just more so to keep that, keep that bait inside of that tree. I don't want to be below the tree. I just want to be right in the middle, worming through all those limbs and right around the main trunk. So that's kind of the purpose of that big trailer light jig. It's not necessarily because I'm fishing shallow water. It's just more so the fact that I'm just trying to keep it in that strike zone.